thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, we're still discussing understanding true democracy, and we have Cheta and Larry Kay with us. Um, Lami, you're going to ask a question? Okay, um, to Larry Kay. My question is about um, civic engagement and accountability. I think they work hand in hand. And I think part of the problems we have in Nigeria and as Nigerians is that we fail to, to, to hold our, our, our leaders accountable. And the, the, the procedure for accountability is almost not there. So what are your thoughts on this? Um, that's so big. Which is part of the failure of what we've talked about in terms of not really having democracy. Um, quite a lot of the uh, basic principle of accountable governance is completely missing here. Yeah. So nobody is accountable, accountable to anybody. So if you look at the example of the legal state out of our seven, you would find how ridiculous it was for not only that we're having corruption, but we're having impunity. Um, they would see the Speaker of the House talking to the Parliament before the press and saying their wives were sponsored to Dubai. For what? You, you they can explain. And four million naira was spent on individual wives of the parliamentarian. You got 37 men in the House of Assembly with three. Um, this is in a state where you don't have functional public primary school. You don't have functional public secondary schools. The health center and health care facility is completely zero. The roads are also, are also bad. And the social infrastructure is actually collapsing. So there's no, no sense of terrible in, in, anymore in, in this situation. And every opportunity, which is where media is on the future, the media needs to provide that platform of setting the agenda. Uh, it is rather unfortunate you will see the report of that presentation by the speaker. And rather than the criticism of that statement, Smith just reported it as he said. And nobody is just supposing that statement with the reality of ground, with the responsibility of the parliament, with the constitution, with the parliamentary mandate and procedure. And, and these are very important ingredients that we need to provide the platform. People are already hungry, they are sick, you know. They are disoriented, illiteracy is high. So even the motivation for demanding accountability is almost zero. But we as the um, social conscience need to find a way of regalvanizing that process. Yeah. All right, so I want to come to Chacha quickly. Um, part of what I read about democracy is equality, right, and political freedom. Do you think we can ever get to that point in Nigeria? Let's bring it home now where we experience equality and political freedom hmm. in this country, if we say we truly want to practice um, true democracy, do you think, or if we would not get there, what do we need to start to do to get there? Because we are looking for solutions right now. Okay, um, first things first. Uh, I think that we are on the wrong foot if we are looking for equality. Um, equality does not exist in nature. What we should be looking for is equity. Um, and so the, the difference between equity and equality is this. For equality, you are giving the same conditions to everybody regardless of, handi of uh, handicap. But for equity, you are basically giving similar conditions to everybody so that those who have a handicap can actually have it, a fair chance of achieving their potential. Now, for us to get to that point where we can actually have equity, there are five things that we need to, uh, that in my view, we have to identify as a problem um, with Nigeria at the moment in terms of our democratic process. Number one, there's a, process, there's a problem of credibility. Um, since 1999, we've, we've really had only two credible elections, the 1999 elections themselves and then the 2015 elections. All the other elections have been questionable, and that's a problem given that we've had four other general elections. So a return of 33% in terms of credibility is it's no surprise that people are beginning to log out. The, if you look at it, if you draw a trend line, you will see that the turnouts in elections are becoming progressively lower. This keys into another thing, violence. I mean, 
there is nobody who watches the news even casually about Nigeria now that would deny that Nigeria is becoming an increasingly violent country. Nigeria is a violent country, but this violence has become an acceptable currency in our electoral process. And the use of the use of violence by political actors in elections means that most people stay away from elections, period. And when you have people staying away from elections, then it's, it brings a crisis of legitimacy for the government. Um, what it, it leads to situations where non-state actors can fill in the gaps that the government has abandoned, which is why you have all sorts of names getting, a, uh, getting more, more prominent and more powerful within the system. Um, another thing that we, that we must look at is electoral reform. So the legacy of uh, Omar Musa Yeratua, the former, pre former president who is now late, God, God rest his soul, was the US panel. He admitted that the 2007 elections that brought him into power were flawed, deeply flawed. So he set up a panel headed by Justice Uwes, and the panel recommended electoral reform. The Electoral Act, imperfect as it is, was the, was the result of that. Now, Yeradua's successors, good luck, Jonathan, but even worse, Muhammadu Buhari, have failed to build up on that. Muhammadu Buhari has had three chances, at the very least, to sign um, uh, reform, uh, reforms, amendments to the Electoral Act. And he has not just failed, he has refused. Which brings me to the next step, lack of continuity. One of the things that has been the bane of Nigeria's economic progress, and that has dovetailed into political progress, is the fact that most of our leadership have shown this penchant for coming in, scattering everything that the person did before, or scattering most things, and then starting again. You cannot, I mean, when you don't have continuity, you can't build anything. Um, examples. Uh, a lot of the good uh, of Jonathan's power reforms were simply ignored by Muhammad Bubari. Now his government is running around doing some of those same things after wasting five years. Yara Adwa himself, who I look at as somebody that was a, a, in many ways a model leader, reversed Obasanjo's proposed sale of the refineries. Where what are what are the refineries now? Remember that Yara Adwa died ten years ago. Um, even at the at the subnational level in the states. Governor, uh, Governor Sanwulu in Lagos has scattered a lot of things that Governor Ambode did. Ambode himself scattered a lot of things that the uh, uh, fashion yeah. did before him well, in Cross River. Yeah. Democracy. So, so, pardon me? I said, are they not part of the disadvantages of democracy in season term uh, no. uh, elections? It's, no, in, in, season, in season democracies, when a government policy has been put in place, the, the, the season democracies understand that they have a shelf life. But the government policy that is put in place, you don't see very good example, uh, because that's where you have the, the biggest swings, labor and conservatives in the UK. You don't see labor coming in or the conservatives coming in. You, don't, you didn't see David Cameron coming in and then destroying all the signature policies of uh, Tony Blair or Gordon Brown. Yes. As a matter of fact, it is, a, it is an abnormality that Donald Trump came in in the U.S. and began to undo a lot of the policies of Barack Obama. That is why people went up in arms because okay. it wasn't. Um, Ronald Reagan was succeeded by Republican George Bush. Okay, um, Cheta, I hear came you. In and continued many of the policies. Hi, Cheta. So if I could just jump in right there, um, what I'm hearing you say is that you know we need to start to focus on the system and stronger institutions, right? So to, for democracy to work, because we've agreed that we're on a journey, we're not there yet, right? So for democracy to work, um, we need stronger institutions that will essentially derive their authority from the constitution, right? Not from one person or, you know, not from the executive or something, right? So for us to be able to achieve that, right, what do we need to do? How can we enhance, you know, the electoral process? That's number one. Number two for me is, I feel like we should keep the same energy because a lot of us focus on the governor. You did mention, you know, the president, here, do the governor, you know, shouldn't we keep that same energy for the House of Representatives, the House of Assembly, you know, and the me, Senate? Sorry to cut you short because we are running out of time. In yeah. addition to what you have said, I would like to hear his thoughts about the present state of um, rule of law in Nigeria because it's an integral part of democracy. So if you can so, answer the question so In quickly. one minute for Cheta and Larry, please. So let's hear your final thoughts. 
Let Larry go first. Okay, all right. Larry, please. Okay, thank you. I, I, I think when I want to look at what you both said, you know, I, I think the focus is the other way around. The focus has been so much at the federal level, and we've completely neglected uh, the sub-national level. Um, as you, you heard what happened in Kaduna yesterday. So the moment you don't have the independence of the other hands of government, the judiciary and uh, the legislature, you completely erode the sense of good governance, accountability, and transparency. So it is absent in all the taxi states of the federation. You can't hold credible local government elections. It is always the governors winning all the local government elections. But in all the states, you, there's no house that can stand and transform the authority of the governor in all the states. So that is completely eroded. The judiciary, you have the governors appointing members of the bench, and the appointment is also based on nepotism, cronyism, and all that. And until we're able to get this right, until we're able to galvanize the people to make demands and query action, decisions, and policies of government, it is extremely going to be very difficult for us to attain all that we are aspiring for. And I think the rule of law uh, is already playing out. You know, the absence of it, you can see some of the judgments of Nigeria are not respected outside the country. The businesses will not come. So if you are inviting investment into a country where the rule of law is mm -hmm. not respected and the independence of the judiciary is not uh, um, um, assured, people cannot come to arbitration because they can see that they can't get okay, their justice. judgments um, from the court. So, Foreign investors would really come to place in places where you have this kind of um, eroded basic principles of, uh, of democracy. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Larry. So, Chacha, quickly in one minute. <laughs> um, so, there are two things. I mean, uh, Larry has talked okay. about rule of law, which is very <laughs> vital. You, uh, once you don't have rule of law, um, it's... There's, there's really nothing that it's, it simply will not work. However, um, policy, con uh, policy congress, you can't be having policies that are all over the place mm -hmm. or unnecessary policy flip-flops and expect rule of law. Mm -hmm. You can't have a preparedness for leadership. We've never had a leader that was prepared the, uh, for, for leadership. Uh, the, the best prepared probably was Obasanjo. And probably because he had the uh, the experience of uh, being uh, a head of state before. But then that's Buhari ran for president four times. Yet look at he's completely yeah, unprepared right. for leadership. And it is under his watch that our security has so deteriorated and Nigeria is ethnically divided and religiously divided because he's an absentee, absent, absentee leader. Um, so rule of law, preparation for leadership, and honesty hmm. we need to be honest about where we are mm -hmm. so that we can chart a path forward about where we are going, going. To. if we are if we don't sit down and realize where we are and admit to ourselves this we are where we not the giant of mistake, africa yeah. we're a poor country mm -hmm. that is unprepared for anything that has lost its position in the world mm -hmm. and we need to rebuild then importantly for the subnational units we need to stop this thing of every... The, I mean, the exclusive legislative list contains 58 items, uh, uh, 68 items, sorry. The federal government should not be in it everything. So mm -hmm. It should not. Absolutely. Exactly. Thank you so much, Eta. Ladies, I mean, this, <laughs> today is just a, a good day. So <laughs> let me quickly, in one minute... I mean, what's I quite so agree with what he said that we concentrate powers too much in the center. center. Mm -hmm. I think the moment we decentralize up to the local mm -hmm. level, I think mm -hmm. we'll start seeing changes because it will be easier for you to hold people who are in your neighborhood accountable, mm -hmm. like That's the local, local, the yeah. councillors yeah. and all that. Absolutely. Instead of the federal, because I always complain about that. that Everybody is always talking about the federal. Mm -hmm. What about the state? They absolutely. have actually Local more government. responsibility. Yeah, yes. 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 How about you, Tammy? Yes. Absolutely. So to add to that, we can't hold President Buhari responsible for what's happening in our local government. You yes. know? So it, it's spot on. I'd just like to add that Additionally, for the Senate, because the president doesn't make the laws, mm -hmm. right? The local government guys also, yes, rep office for your neighborhood and all of that, but they don't make the actual laws that affect us. Because 
I mean, but, but, Jeta but, sorry, mentioned just the to budget mention that, that was passed. You know that quite a number of people do not even know who their representatives are. That's the thing. So during the election, so so during so elections, so we don't pay yeah, we don't forward yeah. enough of yeah. the strong man politics, mm -hmm. or the governor and the president. Mm -hmm. you know, let's go keep the local. same energy for everybody. And go so and that try to know who to it is that we are voting. And change get that very we are involved at that level. Absolutely. I think we can wrap on that. Thank you so much, ladies, for doing this. All right, so please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode tomorrow at 3 p.m. It's been an insightful conversation. And keep all those conversations going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa 1 and at Plus TV as we continue to hear what you're saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Man's capacity for justice makes democracy possible, but man's inclination to injustice makes democracy necessary. necessary. So at this point, democracy is truly necessary. Absolutely. So we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you so much to all our guests, Cheta and Larry Kay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>